I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, my voice is not very loud, so if I like, go down with my voice after a certain time, just tell me, yell or something. And I would also like to say that this, what I'm going to talk about is joint work with Stefan Lamy. So, well, the Cremona group is the group of rational transformations of the projective space. Um, and I will write here KPN. Um, people also write here NK or inverted, depending on what you want to do. So, oop. So these are the maps over K, which is a field of your choice. And since we have global um, coordinates in that group, we can uh, write any of those map in coordinates. So they are given by um, polynomials that are homogeneous of equal degree. with coefficients in our field K. Um, since they're all of equal degree, oh, since we can kill common divisors, we can just assume they don't have any common divisors. And then, that, then we have a notion of degree, which is just the degree of the Fi's. And well, for, so what is this group? For n equal to one, that's just PGL2. Okay, and for n at least two, the group is not finite dimensional anymore. Because we can inject into it a polynomial ring of at least um, n minus one, n minus two variables. N minus, n minus one variables. By just the map in uh, affine coordinates. These family of maps, the, the inverse is given by a minus here. They give us an injection of that polynomial ring. I'm sorry, there's a K here into the Cremona group. And um, sadly, there is no nice algebraic structure on the Cremona group that we uh, can work with. Uh, there's, it is not an algebraic stack or scheme that would actually collide with a, with a notion of morphisms um, of varieties to the Cremona group. But um, well, it is still a group, and we can do group theory on it. And um, one of the questions that I would like to uh, discuss today is normal subgroups. Does the Cremona group have normal subgroups? It was open for a long time. Um, and was answered in, for all the fields in 2014. So let me state the question.
Well, it has the trivial subgroup and the full group that are normal. But uh, those are not the ones we want. Does it have any non-trivial proper normal subgroups? Um, well, for n equal to 1, that depends on your field. Because PSL2 is, uh, is simple if the field has at least four elements. So the answer So okay, this is uh, this is old, this is classic, and for n equal to two. The question was answered by um, Ganta Lamy over C, by Shepard Byrne, and for finite fields, and by Lanjou for any field. And this was in 2015, 14, 13. Um, the answer is yes, there are non trivial proper normal subgroups. What they do is they um, use that the Cremona group acts on an infinite hyperbolic space, and some elements are tight, and powers of those tight elements generate normal proper subgroups. And um, in the article of Longeau, she gives concrete examples of such maps. Um, uh, they are of the form xy is sent to y. Um, y n minus x, where the characteristic of k does not divide n, and a power of that generates a normal proper non trivial subgroup. That um, is not precise. There's a power, a power <coughs> of it. Depends on the LM, on the. Oh, I actually not sure. Perhaps she has a bound for these specific maps, but in general, that I think there's no universal power. And uh, for n bigger or equal to three. The question is still open. Uh, we are working on it. And well, so I want to make the question more precise. These, the examples that are constructed here, they're quite wild, and their quotients are quite wild. For instance, any countable subgroup embeds into a quotient of Cremona group modulo that normal subgroup. So they are, the quotients are quite huge. And I want to make the question more precise. Are there any normal subgroups of finite index? Any proper 
normal subgroups. And here, um, well, for n equal to 1, we know what happens. And for n equal to 2, the answer is that depends on the field. For algebraically closed field, there are none. For non-closed fields, sometimes. And by that, I mean uh, we know an answer for some fields and we don't have an answer for other fields. So let me explain to you why there are none, no normal subgroups of finite index of the Cremona group uh, over an algebraically closed field. Uh, what we do to find or uh, to say anything about this, uh, these normal subgroups is construct homomorphisms from the Cremona group to a finite field. If they're non-trivial, they give us a normal subgroup of finite index. If there are none, we know that there are no such normal subgroups. So what I want to do for algebraically closed fields is to prove the following statement. And uh, well, suppose we do have such a morphism. Um, then the kernel intersects the automorphism group of P2. And since K is algebraically closed, and this is infinite, um, the, um, the intersection is not trivial. And this, is, this intersection is a normal subgroup of the automorphism group. which is isomorphic to PGL3, which is a simple group. So this intersection is equal to the automorphism group, which means that the kernel contains the automorphism group. Now the kernel is a normal subgroup, so it also contains the normal subgroup generated by the automorphism group, which is the group generated by all conjugates of automorphism. So the smallest normal subgroup containing the automorphism group. And I will denote it with two brackets here. Um, but now actually, the smallest normal subgroup containing the automorphism group. It's the group generated by all the conjugates of automorphisms. And if K is algebraically closed, that is the whole group. Why? Let me, now that I screwed up a bit my image on the blackboard, um, the neutral Castanuovo theorem tells us that the Cremona group over an algebraic closed field is generated by, its automor by the automorphism group of P2. And one single transformation, which is in a fine coordinates given by 1 over x, 1 over y, 
int, we can, now we uh, take this one, C sigma, the composition of sigma with the automorphism z minus x, um, z minus y, z, as order three, this here is an involution. So that gives us this, that um, h, sigma h, is equal to sigma h sigma. Sigma is an involution too. So here we have a conjugate of a automorphism, which is contained in the normal subgroup generated by the automorphisms group. And so we just compose from H from both sides and we obtain that also sigma is contained here. So this normal subgroup here contains the automorphism and the other generator of the chromonal group contains all of it. And that concludes our proof for algebraically closed fields. Now, what we used here is a specific generating set of the, of the plane chromona group, and that theorem does not hold anymore for fields that are not algebraically closed. So the argument doesn't work for algebraic for non-closed fields. Um, and in general, the statement will be uh, well, in a lot of cases, the statement would, will be wrong. For uh, the next nice field, which is other, let's move on to non-closed fields. And the first nice field that is not algebraically closed is R. Um, so here we know a generating set. We have to add to this generating set another Trans quadratic transformation and another family of transformations. So here we know that the Cremona group is generated by the automorphism group of P2, that transformation. The circle involution and a family of transformations of degree five, all of which are well defined at the real points of P2. And using that generating set, we find the abelianization of the Cremona group. Um, it is isomorphic to a sum of set two sets and the sum is uncountable. And in fact, the commutator subgroup here is nothing but the normal subgroup generated by the automorphism groups, group, and it contains these two transformations as well. Um, whereas the quotient here is generated by the images of the degree five maps. So just like in the algebraic uh, closed case, the normal subgroup generated by the automorphism group is in the kernel of the map from beer to that sum. And well, what we get in particular is that there is a our uncount, un, there are uncountably many maps from beer are P2, two set, two set, and they're all non-conjugate. 
So in particular, we have an, in, an uncountable number of proper normal subgroups that are not conjugate and whose index is two. So there is already, if you just pass from C to R, already a huge difference. And um, the difference becomes even more, or even bigger, if you move on to fields whose algebraic closure is not a finite ex extension of the field. And the theorem I would uh, like to discuss is the following. Um, given a field uh, with an extension of degree eight, Perfect field, I'm sorry, a perfect then the Cremona group is an amalgamated product. Along the common intersection of these groups, which is the automorphism group of P2 or K. Um, and uh, the index set has at least the cardinality of the field K. So this um, is never a trivial, is, uh, is a non-trivial amalgam. The groups here um, with index in B are isomorphic to um, free products. The free product of the automorphism group of P2 is that two set. And that gives us a um, homomorphism from the Cremona group onto a free product of set two sets, which are parametrized by B. So there are two star notations here. This is an amalgamated product along the common intersection of the groups. And this is a free product. And there are as many factors as, we, as B is large. So it's the same notation, but it's not the same kind of group. And here, the set two set is generated by a Bertini involution, where here, the role of the, of the guys that survive are transformations of degree five. Here, these are Bertini involutions, they are transformations of degree 17. So, um, I will introduce the Bertini involutions and then I will make some re remarks about the statements. So if we have a perfect field and with a, an extension of degree eight, there are points in P2. We find eight points in P2 that are one Galio, Galois orbit of points which are in general position. So, um, And um, at points and and 
through such eight points passes a pencil of cubic curves. <laughs> whose uh, general member is smooth. And the pencil has an additional base point, uh, which has to be a k-rational point. And we blow up these eight points. We end up on a, we obtain a Delgato uh, surface of degree one, or okay. K. Um, up here, um, this is a vibration, an elliptic vibration, and on each uh, fiber, we take the ninth point as our zero point, and on each of them, we do the involution x goes to minus x. And that actually gives us an algebraic. Well, an automorphism of the Delpizzo surface up here. I will write this. This is what we do on each fiber. And we go down the same way we came. And what we obtain, what we obtain below is a birational transformation, which is called Bertin involution, and which is of degree 17. So the degree here, this 17, is not important in the, in the storage, just to say this is not an automorphism. And um, there is, so there is a list of generators of the Cremona group by, in, for a general perfect field by Iskowski. And he has a second paper where he gives a huge list of relations among his generators. It's at least four pages, for a list of 40 pages. And if you look at it closely, you see that the Bertini involution, they don't appear in it. They appear in the trivial, as trivial relation that they are involutions. Um, but the paper is not very uh, accessible, so we, we do not use it here to prove it. What we do use is that over perfect fields, since a rational map of P2 over perfect fields factors into a sequence of blow-ups and blow-downs of orbit Galois, uh, of orb, sorry, Galois conjugate, conjugate points, orbits of Galois conjugate points. We can, uh, uh, the circuits of program works for perfect fields, and that's what we use to prove this statement. What we do is to, um, we construct a topological space that encrypts the circuits of program for us. Um, we show that it is uh, connected and simply connected. Then we construct a quotient, a topological quotient from it. The chromium group acts on the topological space, also on the quotient, and the quotient turns out to be a tree whose, whose fundamental domain is the Basser tree of an amalgamated product. So that's the, that's the strategy to prove this. Uh, before I go more into the strategy, I would like to discuss why, um, even though there is a list of generators given by Skowski, why we don't uh, really uh, use it. The reason is that it is not of bounded degree. A generating set of the Cremona group over a field whose extension algebraic closure is not a finite extension of the field, cannot have a generating set of bounded degree. Why?
here for k equal to r, or we have one, the bound is five. And for algebraically closed field, the bound is two. Um, but in general, there is not one. Why? Because for instance, we, we can consider the transformations uh, of the following form. Where alpha, beta, gamma, delta um, is in TGL two of k of x, then this transformation, so x, y goes through, this con transformation contracts the curve given by the determinant of that uh, matrix. And that might be an irreducible curve or our field. Now, um, if we had a generating set, of bounded degree, then um, the curves contracted by these, uh, by these maps, their degree depends on the degree of f. So there's also a bound on the degree of the curves that can be contracted by any map generated by these maps. And we can just take one of these maps such that that, curve, that polynomial is high enough and they're reducible, and then that element will not be in the group generated by the set. Um, so a generating set of this, group, of this group is very large. So to prove this theorem, what I did is just brute force playing with relations among the generators. And that is not reasonable anymore for such a big group. Now, oh, here. I'm sorry? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, is infinite. Oh, thanks. If it is not infinite, then the extension is of degree two, and then we are more or less in this case here. Thanks. Uh, well. I say more or less because the statement does not say anything about the characteristic of our field, so it behaves like R, but it might not be R. Um, oh, well, perhaps I'd rather erase it from the blackboard. Where was I? Um, So, um, what is the strategy? Strategy. I would like to explain the topological space that we construct um, to get our uh, topological quotient. Strategy. Um, our topological space will be um, something like a square complex.
and uh, what we do is the vertices. We have uh, we construct the graph and then we insert some some planes. So we have vertices. They are classes of surfaces over a base and birational maps where the surfaces are k rational. Um, B is a point or, a, or P1. And uh, we have a morphism from S to B and have a rational map phi to P2. And two pairs, S over B and phi, are, um, are in the same class. if um, all that matches well. So if you go from S prime to P2 by phi prime, and from S to P2, then here we want to have an automorphism, and it should commute with the, um, this, we should have an automorphism of B prime and P. So all this commutes. And on top of it, we want the, um, for pi, we need minus ks to be pi ample. We want to decode the circuits of program. So minus k is pi ample, and the relative invariant picker number of s over b is at most three. So if b is a point, we have a Dilbitzer surface, if B is P1, we have a conic bundle. So these, are, these are my vertices of the complex. On the edges, we put an oriented edge between two such vertices. If um, we obtain S prime from S by a birational um, morphism, um, that makes the following diagram clean. We have a morphism from B to B prime. So this gives us a graph. And edges uh, of the form Encode a circus of link. Why? So a link of uh, type one would be um, the blob of a point or of an orbit of Galois conjugate points in our case. So we have uh, this is a point. We blow up um, an orbit of points. We get a surface. This is also over the point, but the same surface can also be seen as a a, um, a bundle. So then we would have this. So this gives us this kind of edge, this kind of a uh, sequence of edges. Um, for a link of type 2, we can write it, well, we blow up something on the surface, we, we keep our base, we contract, we keep our base. So also a link of type 2 gives us the same 
such an edge. And so type three is the same as here. Um, type four for rational surfaces is just uh, changing the vibration in P1 cross P1. So there will be, you have F0, one vibration. Then we go to F0 over the point and we have the other vibration. So the graph gives us back, encodes us the circuit of program. And now every time we have, oh, I would like to use this. In the graph, the following form, We have this, we just put a square. So these are our squares. So, then, uh, so we, we maintain the assumption that we have a field perfect with an extension of degree A? Is that uh, for this, for the construction of the complex, we don't need it. Do you need any, anything here? We need Does perfect. Come up perfect. We need perfect. What now, extension of degree eight is to see that a Bertini involution never belongs to a square. Ah, uh, and perfect? Perfect we need for, um, for the circuits of program, for the links actually to make sense. Over non-perfect fields, it could happen that, um, for instance, let me, so that, um, you cannot talk about Galois group anymore for imperfect fields, algebraic closure, you could take the separable closure, mm -hmm. all right. But then, um, for instance, um, we have, oh, we have, um, here, over um, F2T, which is not perfect, we have, uh, um, this is a square over the algebraic closure. So the map looks like it has two points where it's not defined, but it has a third point, which is sort of, which is on the, in the first neighborhood of the, um, of the point that is not uh, zero, zero, one. Uh, no, I'm sorry, zero, yeah, zero, zero, one. That should be the Galois conjugate to a point that is in P2. So just uh, blowing um, over non-perfect fields, a transformation of P2 does not um, decompose into a sequence of blow-ups and blow-downs of, of uh, conjugate points. Okay. Okay. So that's the, that's the thing. Right. Um, right, and uh, so this is our square complex, and now um, there are two things. So first, the Cremona group acts on the square complex by just a composition. Then by the theorem of Calogiros, um, the square complex is connected and simply connected. Which tells us in particular that um, a, um, so first of all, the Cremona group over K can be like generated by Sarkisov links. And uh, a relation among these links is the same as a loop on our square complex. And um, 
now, if our field has an extension of degree 8, and we have Bertini involutions, Bertini involutions do not appear in any square. So Bertini involutions do not appear in any relation among circuits of links, except by conjugation or since there are involutions. You go back and forth. And now, in the square complex, we um, contract everything that is not in the orbit of a Bertini involution. And what we obtain is a tree. And its fundamental domain is of the is a Basser tree. So what I want to say is that the quotient is of this form. The quotient, sorry, the fu fundamental domain of the quotient is of this form. Here we have the image of P2 with the identity. Um, here we have the image of blowing up an orbit of eight points in P2. Um, so I say it's Pn. Here would be the edge corresponding to um, P2 with the corresponding Bertini involution. Um, here we have different Bertini involution coming and we move on. And then we have one represented that just represents whatever we contracted, uh, say the blow up of a of a k point. And the stabilizer, so the, Cremo, the action of the Cremona group descends to our quotient. It acts on the tree. And the stabilizer of this point is the automorphism group of P2. The stabilizer of this is the group generated by automorphisms and the Bertini involution. Um, which in the theorem would be GB. And the stabilizer of this lonely point there, uh, vertice there, is EGE, which is uh, the group generated by automorphisms and links that are not Bertini involutions. And Passer tells us uh, that the Cremona group is thus the amalgamated product of all these groups, this group, along their common intersection, which is the automorphism group. We do the same, then we repeat the whole story. For these groups, we get the second statement. And from the first and second statement, we get the morphisms. Uh, so this was the quick version of the proof. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.